and Tangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! And all creatures! And the creature gonna get you tonight! You better not turn out your bedroom light! He'll grab your head and give us such a bite! What in God's name is all this commotion about? The staff are attempting to put up a tree as you requested. The young woman is determined to belay that order. What on earth for? Tangella loves decorating the tree. If you recall, she insisted that we use a live tree this year. The handyman felt that the additional work that would be needed on his part was unwarranted. Well, I, I can certainly see her point. The smell of a freshly cut fur does add a pleasant Christmas-like aroma to the manor. But I can also see the logic of using a counterfeit tree to spare the life of a sapling so that it may grow to its fullest glory and splendor. How would you like me to proceed? Oh, just let them work it out amongst themselves. Very well. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. With me is the ringmaster of this peculiar circus of household staff, Mr. Livingston. And do we have a most fantastical program in store for you? First off film, Silent Night, Bloody Night from 1972 is a timeless Yuletide classic that warms the hearts and chills the spines of holiday enthusiasts everywhere. Move over, Dickens! Step aside, Rankin Bass. This cinematic masterpiece is the epitome of a traditional Christmas tale. Who needs sugar plum fairies when you can have axe-wielding maniacs? Forget about chestnuts roasting on an open fire. This film offers the cozy ambiance of a burning mansion. And nothing says season's greetings like mysterious family secrets, a dash of insanity, and a generous sprinkle of murder. It's the feel-good holiday movie that will have you checking under the tree for more than just presents. Because nothing says Christmas like a little blood, suspense, and the warm glow of a screen flickering with terror. It's a holiday tradition for those who like their eggnog spiked with a side of scream. What? Nothing. Broke it again. And who might be our guest for the evening, Livingston? No one. I take it there was a scheduling conflict with a famous movie star we had previously booked to appear tonight. Negative. No one was interested in wasting one of their holidays sitting in for a ridiculous show like this. Wonderful. So don't go away for this to be another night of pre-Christmas horror show fright right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Tangella, did you know that if our viewers switched over to Channel 4, they could watch a movie called Zeppelin from 1971? Listen to this. A German mission to destroy the Magna Carta, secured in a Scottish castle, provides airborne action. A World War I melodrama filmed in Malta, Wales, and Scotland. It stars... She's not even listening to me, is she? No. Livingston, it stars Michael York, Elkie Summer... And uh, a bunch of other people I don't know. Anyways, if you're uh, not wanting to watch us, you can certainly watch that. Welcome to Creature Features. It's going to be a fun night tonight because it's not quite Christmas yet, as you can tell by our 
lack of a tree and Tangelo's attempt to untangle those lamps. Yeah, I thought Hendry would take care of that for her. She wouldn't allow it. Oh, well. You know, she is rather rather picky on certain Christmas items, is she not? This seems to be a colorful Halloween ensemble. That is a rather colorful Halloween thing. Anyways, uh, tonight's film is Silent Night, Bloody Night, 1972. Last time we showed this film was probably six years ago. Six and a half. Six and a half years ago. And uh, it's, it's a, it's a Christmas-like film because it's got Silent Night. Right? Well, in the beginning. No, they don't. They never sing the song. Mm. Silent Night, Bloody Night. I mean, they should sing that, right? No. That should have been the opening theme. That would be rather tragic. No, it said it's got some circus music at the beginning. You'll see. Uh, so it's a, it's a good movie. It's, it's fun. It's got some, some famous people in it. We'll get yes. to them in a bit. But uh, no guests tonight because it's so close to Christmas that we could not obtain a guest, right? It's difficult. It's, it's too close to Christmas. People do not want to travel, understandably. So I think uh, we're just going to have to uh, make do with what we have. And Hendrew ran off, so we don't have Hendrew to sit in. Maybe, maybe we could get Mrs. O'Connor to I sit in for a moment. I think they've both been run off, Why not? Actually. Look at the face she's making. She's crossed with Mrs. O'Connor because they had a bit of a conflict with the, the conifer. With the conifer. A conflict of conifers. In any case, uh, let's get this film started. And uh, when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll chat some more. See you soon. One last time, I have to see this ground. It's beautiful now, as if nothing had happened here. Soon they will tear down the main house, and then nothing will be left. Nothing, except what I remember. I grew up in the town nearby, where my father was the mayor, and where this house stood, waiting for me. It was built by Wilfred Butler. We had never seen him, and he never lived at home. Until the day before Christmas in 1950, he finally did come back for the last time. us believe that his death was an accident. No one knew that another person had come to Butler House that Christmas. Deputy Coroner of the County of Arlington, State of Massachusetts. I hereby find upon evidence of an autopsy conducted by the medical examiner of this county that the deceased, Wilfred Butler, died as a result of burns inflicted accidentally upon himself on his own premises during the afternoon of December 24th, 1950. No further inquiry shall be held over the body of the deceased and this inquest is officially closed. All is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child.
After the coroner's inquest, on New Year's Day, they buried Wilfred Butler. There was no one there to mourn him. It was the funeral of a stranger. Wilfred Butler, being of sound mind and body, at least what the world considers sound, do hereby leave my house and its grounds and all personal effects within that house to my only surviving relation, my grandson, Jeffrey Butler. And I solemnly charge him with one duty. Let him leave the house as I left it, standing untouched to remind the world of its inhumanity and cruelty. For 20 years, that house lay empty, exactly as Wilfred left it. And then, last year, Rumors began that it was finally being sold. The newspaper story traveled through the county to a state hospital for the criminally insane. The man who came to sell the house had never seen it. He was a lawyer from the city, just doing a job and enjoying it.
Well, didn't I tell you? It's beautiful. Can we see the rest of it? <laughs> Honey, that was it. I think the mayor's waiting for me. My love is such an important man. Right. Laura always says that. Darling. What? Don't be long. Honey, if you get bored, just look at the view. Sooner or later, that viaduct's gonna take us back home. Friends, Tangella and I would like to take a moment to compel you to join Creature Features TV. It is our new streaming service that offers you early access to Creature Features from your computer or your favorite set-top device. You can see the full archive of Creature Feature episodes, movies we've yet to present on the show, a library of items from the original program, plus many other items you won't find anywhere else. Your small yet generous subscription fee not only supports the operation of the service, but actually helps finance the creation of our show. It's a very inexpensive way to ensure that we'll be able to continue producing creature features for years to come. Not to mention it'll keep Tangela out of making mischief and wreaking havoc in the village as well. So please visit CreatureFeaturesTV.com to learn more. And thank you so much for your support. You, you do cause trouble. You know, I think all this fighting with the, the trees caused my hair to go flat. It's all your fault. Oh, well, that's lovely. We should do both sides. Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, you're a little bit late, but you have not missed too much. We're watching uh, Silent Night, Bloody Night. Livingston absolutely adores this film, do you not? You make a lot of unwarranted assumptions, don't you? Well, no, I just, I, you're not complaining as much as you typically were during a film. Well, it's not complaint worthy. Oh, I think he's just getting tired of complaining, which is a good thing for me and probably a good thing for you as well. So uh, anyways, uh, this film, uh, John Carradine, you'll notice he's in this film, and you'll also notice that he does not speak at all during the entire film. It's a really? bit of trivia. Nope, he does not speak. And I think it was some kind of contractual thing where it was like, I will do this film, but I will not speak. Huh. And they said, all right, don't speak. And so uh, later there's some noises he makes, but they dub those in with somebody else. So mm. there's that. Anyways, you got anything uh, interesting to say? No? no she did, she's not talking it much at all tonight. I, I think she's, she's a bit cross still with uh, the maid about the whole She's treatment. cross with everyone. No, well, she's never cross with me, right? Never? Well, not that I've seen. Mm. Who knows? Anyway, should we get back to this film? Please. Let's get back to Silent Night, Bloody Night, 1972. And when we come back, we're going to read some of your mail. See you soon. Mr. Carter. Mr. Mayor. Let me introduce you. This is Charlie Toman, who publishes our weekly newspaper, The Patriot. Mr. Toman. Mm -hmm. And this is Tess Howard. How do you do? She operates our switchboard. Oh, really? We call her the communications director. And this is Bill Mason. Mason? Our sheriff. Won't you sit there, Mr. Carter, at the head of the table? Thank you. I, um, uh, I didn't expect to meet you all together. It's, it's quite a reception. All 
All right, let's begin. As you know, I've been retained by Jeffrey Butler. The matter concerns the house that he inherited from his grandfather, Wilfred Butler. Go on, Mr. Carter. I, I believe that you offered to buy the house for my client. Offered? We begged him. We wrote letters That's and we... That's enough, Tess. Well, it's true. Trouble. There's always trouble. I can sympathize. I spent the last 20 years and more driving people away from there. Prowlers, burglars, kids, they're the worst. Chasing for nothing because of that will. That dribble about humanity. No, no, no. Inhumanity. What the hell is that, huh? Yes, well, he was a bitter man. Hate? It must have been very hard. It must have been hate. That man hated. Well, some people are like that. <laughs> The question is, well, do you still want the house? Are you offering it to us, Mr. Carter? Exactly. Why now? Well, that's Mr. Butler's business, isn't it? You know we're not rich. Most of us came here during the Depression. But we love this town. It's our home. And naturally, you want to improve it. Exactly. My client understands that, and he fully sympathizes, and he's willing to sacrifice the house for $50,000 in cash by noon tomorrow. That's an awful lot of cash. It's also an awfully good bargain. You could go to Wilton. You could go now to the bank. Am I clearly understood? All that cash. Perfect. I'll wait for your answer till tomorrow. You're spending the night here? Yes. May I ask where? At the Butler House. We could put you up at the motel as our guest. No, no, the house is fine. The Paradise Motel. That's very kind of you, but I'm, I'm meeting Mr. Butler about some uh, personal items. You want a phone. I can reconnect the line. D don't trouble, please. No trouble. You need a phone. Don't want to be stuck out there. Mm -hmm. Well, you've uh, convinced me. Thank you. By the way, have you known Mr. Butler a long time? No, I've never met him. He called me and asked me if I'd handle this for him. I said yes. He had the key delivered to my office. Mr. Mayor, Sheriff, Mr. Tolman, Ms. Howard, see you all tomorrow. In fact, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Slick. He's a big lawyer, Bill. You've got to expect that. Don't tell me about lawyers. Oh, you see the way he looked at us? You see his clothes? He's doing his job. Just don't tell me about lawyers. You know what I'd like to see? Two of them like that when talking to each other. Neither one of them would know what to believe. I love you too. 
Only when I get home, I'm going to have a nice, nice surprise for you. Oh, no, I can't tell you what it is now. It wouldn't be a surprise, now, would it? No, no, I can't come home now, but it'll be very soon. Very soon. Honey, of course I miss you. Yes, yes, I, I miss Mommy, too. Uh, Laura, how are you, kid? So I'll call tomorrow. Uh, no, I want to call. I want to talk to Jenny. Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, I'm, uh, I'm having a fine time. Well, same to you, darling. What do you mean, hostile? I was wondering, if we get it, what then? Tear it down. Okay. Okay. I'd better get going. Do me a favor, Tess. Call Diane, tell her I'm going to Wilton, and I'll be back late. I like that. You should wear this all the time. That's, you know, that's a look that is suitable beyond Christmas. Oh, dear. No, because it's, it's, it could be like Easter, bunny, hat. And there's also like a, a Jack Skellington look that would work quite nicely for Halloween as well. Jack you know, Skellington? From uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh. It's a good film. You should watch it. Mm. It's a cartoon. No, oh. it's stop motion animation, is it not? Right. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, we're going to do some mail now because uh, you send us mail, and if we don't read it, that makes us bad people, and we want to be good people, right? That's not going to happen. Well, give me some mail, please, sir. This first one is from Michael Miner. Michael Miner. Or Minner. I would say Miner. Miner, but with an E, so he's not a minor. In any case, dear friends at Creature Features, I have been a huge fan of the hosted horror film genre from the age of six. I am now 58. I grew up in Detroit where we had two, the ghoul and Sir Graves Ghastly. I have researched the history of how the entire phenomena of your industry came to be, and with the start of it all being Malia Nurmi being spotted at a Hollywood party by a producer who needed a new angle to present older horror films that could be rented at low cost. I wish we could rent them at low cost. Vampire, an entire industry was born. She was at a party dressed as Morticia from the Chaz Adams cartoons. Who's Chaz Adams? Charles. Oh, Chaz? Yes, that's the abbreviation. Oh, God. Your show is top flight. Great presentation, great cast, with fun repertoire, and a quick-witted and highly intelligent host. He's talking about me. Uh, See? I told you I'm quick-witted and intelligent. Don't, don't, don't disagree with all intelligent viewers. Uh, you do an honor to the story and history of your show. The only suggestion I would make is to add a segment where you detail the other movies and television shows of the actors in the movies you show. I know Rich Cause, Svenguli, and we have lunch in Chicago once in a while. Your show is actually more to my taste, though he is a very nice guy with massive knowledge of the history of the industry as he grew up in it. The point is, Vincent must be a very cool and talented guy to successfully transition from rock musician to the best horror host in the industry. There, see? I, I, I didn't tell him that, but I imply that he should say that to me, and he never would. Your show is also superior to other contemporaries like Elvira. What you have managed to create is a hosted horror show for the thinking person. That is rare. 
Zachary in New York did it, and Ron Swede was also highly cerebral and intelligently presented a type of counterculture mentality. Make no mistake, your show is important. It's a pleasure to watch. Michael Miner. Well, thank you, Michael. That's a very nice thing. You need to give me more letters like Michael's. Do you have another one in is there like your, that? Is he a friend of yours? No, but it sounds like I paid him to write it. Did it not? I was implying that. Right, right. All right, this is from Ski Han. Skip. Well, it says Ski Han right here. Read further. All right. Hi, I'm Skip from Philadelphia, PA. I can think of many reasons not to watch your creepy show. However, here I am watching show after show. You guys really do a great job. I even got my wife hooked on you guys. She loves tangerine. You know, I love tangerines as well. Do you know? Yes, they're delicious. Uh, but she's Tangella. I hope she likes Tangella as well as she likes tangerines. She thinks she is so cute. Keep up the good work. She thinks you're cute. And you know why she thinks you're cute? Because she doesn't know you she like I do. She doesn't know her. She doesn't know what kind of a terror you are. Okay, we've got two things with this. Greetings from New Brunswick, Canada. You know, we keep hearing from New Brunswick, Canada. Shouldn't it just now be Brunswick? It's not new anymore. That's rather humorous on your part. No, it's not intentional. It's logical. It's been New Brunswick for a while. It's now just Brunswick. And then eventually we become Old Brunswick. You astound me. No. Just stumble upon your channel watching The Long Weekend tonight. Love the old school Aussie B movies. A great one to show, but there's lots of carnage, would be the 1983 Aussie classic Escape 2000. Well, we're going to look into that one. I like Australian films. I like Australian people. You know, they're, not, they're like the British, but they have the, the spirit of the Americans. An interesting observation. Right. I'm a big Haunted House fan, and with Halloween coming... We're reading this a bit late now, aren't we? That's all right. Uh, with Halloween coming upon us, it'd be great to see a movie like Amityville, Burnt Offerings, or The Nestling. Just some classics to name a few. Um, so Amityville, we've tried to get Amityville Horror. And Difficult. We, yeah, no, we, we cannot get that. It's maybe someday, but not yet. I'm also an NFT artist. What the God's name is an NFT artist? I'll explain it to you later. Is this pornographic or something like this? No, it's not. I'm also an NFT artist and attached a piece I did of a local haunted house in my area as a thank you. So this is a local haunted house in this area. We'll put a big one up. And... Um, uh, here's a link to a creepy house I live close by. Hope you enjoy it. I really enjoy you, human, and look forward to more movies. Cheers, Shannon Randall. Well, thank you so much, Shannon, and this is uh, wonderful. I wonder if she painted this with brush. I don't know. Ink on canvas. I don't know. Anyways, that's it for letters. If you would like to send us a letter of your own or a package or a, 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 a U-boat full of eels then uh, visit this website right here because it tells you how to send the stuff by email, by post, and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Right. Right. All right, let's get back to the film, and uh, when we come back, I think we're going to bring Mrs. O'Connor in. No, oh, she hasn't. She's, she's crossed with Mrs. O'Connor. If she's still alive. No, she's fine. All right, see you soon. <laughs>
It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Butler wasn't kidding. Nobody's lived here for years. That would be such a waste. It's his grandfather's monument. You know, it's the caretaker who keeps this place just the way he left it. What kind of monument is this? <laughs> well, that's the trouble. Nobody remembers anymore. That's what usually happens in America. I remember this. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I'm his own. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share there. <laughs> You're not serious. I used to hear that at funerals. At funerals? Yes. When I was a kid in Chipley, Georgia. There's also a Chipley flower, though. But they have both been subsequently eradicated from the map. None other has ever known. Delicatessen, so I brought you pastrami, salami, potato salad, macaroni, everything you like. I'll have bologna and macaroni. No, 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 some of that potato salad. Did you pick the wine too? The delicatessen man took a personal interest in its selection. Oh, well, we got lucky again. That's early 1970. That's hard to come by. Can I have some too? Of course, of course you may. Mmm, thank you. It must have been wonderful. What? People who lived here. They must have had a wonderful life. Well, I hope they did. Wilfred Butler must have believed in something. Believe? Look at that stone fireplace. Parquet floor. The mahogany. This table. Now, you probably think this place is made of wood, right? Well... Wrong. You know what his grandson told me? Underneath that wood, there's two feet of stone. The foundation is eight bricks wide. Now, someday they're going to come in here and they're going to tear this place down and they're going to build little tract houses all over this property on quarter acre and half acre lots. And that bulldozer is going to come up that hill toward this house. And it's going to get the surprise of its life. They built a kingdom out here. I mean, nobody's left. No? Butler has a grandson. Well, he's probably like the rest of us, wants money. You know, he's asking $50,000 cash for this place, and if he only wait, he can get, or oh, he can get at least 250000 But he won't take his time. So he'll get screwed. Do you want to go upstairs now? So, you know, one of the great pleasures in life the pleasure of anticipating pleasure, isn't it? We are very close now, aren't we? Sure, honey. Very close. I don't see any beds yet. Well, keep looking, honey. Butler said the place is furnished. It's furnished. <laughs> A 
anything, do we? No, sir. But look at this. More football, huh? Look how they smeared that quarterback. Look at his arm. Got no time now. Otas. How about that telephone up at the butler house? Is it working? Well, try it now. I'll wait. Hello? Oh, yes, Miss Howard. Yeah, the phone's working fine. Uh, very nice of you to call. Thank you. Good night. Honey, I'm going down to the car to get some cigarettes. Be back in a minute. Okay. Don't get lonely. No, no. is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Mrs. O'Connor, is there any chance you know how to uh, cut hair? I suppose not. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, Tangela stepped away for a moment. Maybe a long moment. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, this this film, have you been catching this film as we've been running it from the background now? No, sorry. I've been working. Yeah, she's she's been working. Anyways, uh, this film started out in a uh, drive-in theater gig where it was mostly in drive-in theaters, and then it disappeared. Nobody saw it again. And then um, when they started doing VHS tapes back in 1981 or whatever it was, it became a cult classic. Hmm. Funny how these things happen. How videotape turns an obscure film. The same thing happened with uh, Somewhere in Time. You remember this film? Yeah. With Christopher Reeve. It's the one about the, the pretty place that they go to, right? Well, it's a pretty place, yes. But he's a time traveler. Remember? Yeah, he but somebody sleeps. He sleeps. That's how he time travels, right? Well, it could have all been a dream. Who knows? Anyways, uh, enough uh, about this movie. We will get back to it in, in a moment. But uh, no, I wanted you up here because I wanted to hear what happened with this tree because I was ex fully expecting to have a tree up here for our pre-Christmas Christmas episode. Well, sir, as you can see, we don't have a tree. Well, Did you see that well, We do have a tree. No, sir. We have parts of a tree. Oh. Well, you know, we've we used that tree every year for the past five, six years, right? Yes, we have. And the entire property is surrounded by trees. I don't know what to tell you, sir. Maybe you should let Tangela use the axe on one. No, well, see, it's, this, this, this estate is polluted with trees. So taking down one tree... I, we could do this for another hundred years. We'd still be fine. There'd still be plenty of trees. But she wanted a live tree. She wanted us to dig it up by the roots and put it in a pot. Oh, I was going to say. And then replant no... it. Oh, all right. Yeah, she well, wanted a redwood at first, but we had to tuck her down. A redwood? Yes. Like one of those tall, tall ones in the meadow. I oh, told her she couldn't much. get the star on all it. Right. All right. Well, as soon as Andrew comes back, then have him put the other one up and we'll just spray it and make her think it's it's a conifer, right? Well, it is a duplicate of one. A duplicate of a conifer. All right, well, you say we get back to this film, but I want you to stick around because I want to ask you about your job. All right? All right. All right, off we go. Silent Night, Bloody Night, 1972. Don't you dare go away because it would be sad if you did. The 
Did you get your cigarettes? Yes, yes, I did. May I have one? Sure. No, it's the most amazing thing. These cigarettes come in these very small packages these days. Oh, that's for me? Mm hmm Can I open it? Oh, no, no, no. Our Christmas is day after tomorrow. Is that an order? Yes, ma'am, that's an order. Bill, someone's calling from Butler House. Okay, put them on. Go ahead now. Mr. Carter? I'm not Carter. Who is this? The owner. Butler. I'm worried, Sheriff. Carter's not here. Speak up, I can't hear you. What is it? What's wrong? His car is here, but he's gone. Won't you come? Okay, okay. Now you stay put in that house. I'll wait for you. Please, hurry. I, I'm afraid. Now take it easy. I'm coming. <sighs> Mr. Butler, are you done? this. You know me, Des. It's Mary Ann. Tell the mayor. Tell them all. I'm waiting in my father's house. Des, it's so lonesome here. Don't be long. Hello? Hello? Hello?
out where is everybody. Hello? Oh, Maggie, thank goodness. What is it, Tess? Something's come up. Something urgent. Can you start early? Oh, honey, I'm watching TV. Maggie Daly, you get yourself over here. What is it? Just get moving, Maggie. Just please hurry. Come in. It's open. Okay, mister, that's far enough. What do you want here? Mayor. Try again. My father's not home. And don't move. You want me to put my hands up? No. Just stay there. What are you staring at? I seem to remember you from the road. That's why I'm holding a gun. You scare me. Well, that makes sense. Thanks. Does everybody carry one here? You can ask the sheriff when he gets here. I'll call him. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but the, uh, the sheriff's office is empty. How do you know? I was just there. Who are you? A Jeffrey Butler. Oh, you're the one who's selling the house? Yes. Have you any ID? Don't laugh at me. I want your ID. Some maniac escaped from Margaretville. Okay. Put it on the table. Now go back. California license. Lucky you. Would you like to see my maniac card from the asylum? They give you one when you escape. There's a big scarlet M on it so people won't get confused. Okay. Look, I'm sorry about the gun. My father's in Wilton getting your money. All I want to do is to get into my house. The sheriff's deputy might have a key. He's about the only one I know of. Well, where is he? You go down the road about a mile and a half till you come to a white house with a white fence, and then you can't miss it. Thanks. That's okay. Merry Christmas. Same to you. If I don't call back in an hour, what? Call the mayor or Mr. Tone and nobody else. Promise me you'll do that. Well, sure. 
Hi, this is Wanda from Daytona Beach, Florida. And I love your show. I've been watching it for a couple of years now. Three to be exact. Why did I miss it all this time? Thank you. Silent nights, bloody night. Livingston rolls his eyes and Mrs. O'Connor cringes. You know, I could write an epic song about that very topic. Yes, you could. Welcome back. As you know, we're watching Silent Night, Bloody Night from 1972. Quick bit of info on this. You know, we recently shared a film on our Friday show called Black Christmas. And that film was inspired by this film because there's many similarities. So if you're a regular watcher of our show, especially the Friday show, you might see a connection or be experiencing some deja vu. Don't. You're not going crazy. That's uh, the way things happen, right? right. Mrs. O'Connor. Mm. Yeah. I, we, we, we never got a good background story for our viewers for you. So you're originally from Ireland. Yes. And how, how, how did you end up here? Well, I followed Mr. O'Connor. You know, I mean, he came over here for work and oh. I came along with him. Well, well there's a bit of laughter. Yeah, I had to sell And so what's he do? Uh, he doesn't do much these days. He just sort of lies around. Oh. Yeah. Well, is that a, a typical thing in the O'Connor family? Oh, well, he's dead, so. Oh. So I didn't, you never told me she was, he was, she was a widow. I had no idea. We can refer to you as the Widow O'Connor. I don't like to talk about it. No, no, you shouldn't. Anyways, uh, let's get back to this film. And uh, when we come back, uh, I, I think we're going to give Mrs. O'Connor a break. Yes, okay. she needs to get back to work. Oh, right. All right, off we go. Back to Silent Night, Bloody Night. Don't go away, please. See you soon. Sheriff for 301. I'm heading west on Route 5 to Butler House. You'll hear from me. <laughs> What the hell? Is that light out there? find the deputy? No, I wasn't there. Oh. I was thinking, isn't your lawyer supposed to be at the house? The door was locked. His car was there, so I borrowed it. You mean you stole a car? Yeah. I'm uh, keeping it warm. What if he needs it? Let him find me. Who's coming to dinner? 
Oh, Daddy. We always have dinner every Thursday. Do you want something? No, I ate the uh, Paradise Motel. Yeah, I know. It's awful. What about a drink? Yeah. It's uh, cheap bourbon, but that's a big favorite around here. Do you want ice? No, straight. You look tired. I am tired. Well, here's to a fast dollar. Cheers. Why did you decide to sell the house? Needed the cash. After all these years? I need it now. Huh. What's it like on the inside? You know, I've never seen the inside. When I was a child, my father told me to stay away from it or something terrible might happen. Sort of like a haunted house. I haven't seen it either. You're going to sell it and you've never seen it? Yeah. I don't know. It's too bad. It's about the only place to see around here. Oh, I forgot. Someone keeps calling with a message for my father. She says that she's waiting at your house. In the reception room. What woman is waiting in my house in the reception room? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's not a voice that I know. I better go out there. Can I come too? What for? I'm pushy. I suppose you'll be going back to California soon. Hmm? California. You said you lived there, remember? No, I'll be traveling. Jeff, look. It's the sheriff's car. That tombstone. Pretty cheerful. Who bears the cross shall wear the crown. Wilfred Butler. My grandfather. Oh. <gasps> Someone left their sunglasses in the snow. They're the sheriffs. My lawyer's missing. So is the sheriff. You get strange phone calls. And now someone's fascinated by my grandfather's grave. Let's get out of here. You still want to go to my house? Yes. But I don't want to go alone. Listen. I'm not nervous. Well, of course you're not. Oh, it's the cold. I'm shaking from it. Let's get out of here. We'll get help in town. It's ten minutes' drive. Mr. Toman. Have a nice holiday.
Deputy's not here, but Toman is. Who's Toman? Come on, you'll see. Mr. Toman, wait. No, please, I have to talk to you. I'm sorry, this is Jeffrey Butler. He's the one who's selling the house. He can't get inside the place. And my father's gone to Wilton. So we wondered... Mm -hmm. Anything wrong? He'll tell us. Tess... has gone to his house. Why would she go there? I don't know. Anyway, she won't get in. You say it's locked. He says she hates the place. Would you like to drive there? Diana could stay here, lock herself in. I need a key. Tess isn't here. Are you satisfied? She must have gone to my place. But why wouldn't she go there? She hates it. Maybe she went to see the woman who's there. Someone called the mayor's house before. Said she'd be waiting. What is it? Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you.
Hello, Jeff? Hello? Is anybody there? Who is this? I'm Diane Adams. I spoke to you before. Are you? He'll know. Christmas Eve, 1935. Hello? Hello? Sheriff, I saw your car. Bill, is that you? The person on the telephone said 1935, Christmas Eve, but that's not the beginning. In 1927, Butler House was restored by Wilfred Butler. After that, I find social notes, parties, nothing special. Then, in 1930, Butler's wife, Catherine, dies of tuberculosis. In August 1933, it starts. Wilfred Butler's daughter is cruelly attacked and raped. Her name is Mary Ann, the same name as the caller who left those messages tonight. She's 15 then. On May 2nd, 1934, 
Marianne Butler gives birth to a son, Jeffrey Butler. Jeff. Early in 1935, Butler House is turned over to a Dr. Robinson as an asylum for mental patients. And then Butler goes on to say that he has committed his own daughter. Marianne will live at the asylum. There's no end to this story. It's been carefully cut out of all the papers. Why would Toman do that? Tess has 40 bird cages. Toman is hysterical. Everybody's in my house but me. It's cold outside and you forgot to lock the door. Jeff, how old are you? How old am I? You mean how many years have I lived? No. There's a lot in the paper about your family. I don't want to talk about my family. Wait a minute. There's a woman calling and she says her name is Mary Ann. That was your mother's name, wasn't it? My mother died in childbirth. That's when I started traveling. It's not what the papers say. What's your point? I just thought that you should read something for your own good. Nothing you could tell me about my past or future would be for my own good. Where is the paper? on the table. It's so stupid to lie. I missed the whole event. Jeff, maybe your mother's still alive. Maybe she's waiting for you at the house. I don't know. Come on. No more side trips. Let's go out there.
He's dead. Cut off his hands. You killed him. You killed Tolman. He's asking for help. You killed him. Get in the car. is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. What's she trying to do? Hypnotize the audience? I think she's hypnotizing herself. Yeah. Well, you know, this this thing on her head makes her look like she's from that film uh, Midsommar. Remember that? Midsommar. No, it's called Midsommar. Very Mid well. So Mar. Midsommar. Is that what it means? Yes. Why don't they just say bloody Midsommar? They do. No, they say Midsommar. It's spelled entirely different. It's spelled different. Very well. All right. That's a nice ornament. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, this film, uh, one interesting little tidbit, the uh, mansion, I suppose, is a, nothing compared to ours, but uh, this, this large home uh, is actually uh, in existence in Long Island, which is New York, right? I think it would be on Long Island. Oh, it's in Long Island. It's on Long Island. It's, it's both, right? It's in and on Long Island, and it's a tourist attraction now because of this film. Fascinating. Believe it or not. Anyways, fun, fun thing. So, uh, Tangela, we've been talking about this whole uh, tree thing. And uh, we're thinking maybe you should just take the axe out and go out and fetch your own tree. Right? And this whole thing about roots and planting it. No, that's too much. Because the root system of a tree is apparently the same size as the tree itself. Is that not true? I don't think that's correct. No, I've, I've read this many times, that I'll, if a tree is 20 feet tall, its root systems is 20 feet underneath. I'll have to look it up. He's not an arborist. He's, he's one of the best butlers in the world, but he's certainly not an arborist. And if he was, we'd send him out to cut the tree, right? I would not cut a tree down. Oh, you could do You could be a lumberjack. Oh. No, no, no. Look at, look at the beard. He could be a lumberjack. We, we get him a flannel shirt of some kind and then you need to sing the lumberjack song no no you need to learn the monty python's lumberjack song how's it go i'm a lumberjack and i'm okay i sleep all night and i work all day you could do it he likes to press wild flowers as well anyway so let's get back to the end of this film once the credits roll don't go away because uh, we'll be sitting here wondering where you went and it, it would be like it, it would be like a french exit it's just like where did they go where do they go? We don't know. See you soon. Thank you. 
but for us. The keys. He took them. this knowing that no one shall ever see it. Not my beloved daughter, or even my grandson, Jeffrey. I write for myself in the hope of forgiveness, if that is still possible. And I write for you, Marianne, whose youth and innocence I have destroyed. By 1935, the doctors had treated my daughter for a year. I had believed they could cure her. The child, Jeffrey, was taken from us and sent to California. <laughs> I turned my house into an asylum. I brought doctors to live there. I welcomed other patients. Useless. All of it. I remembered what she had been there was never a lovelier, happier child. Christmas of the first year, I knew that I must act, not for myself, but for my helpless child. Led him to create this institution. Our friend... I had no plan. All I knew was that I must take her from these men, with their promises, their lies. Shall we? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. 
I knew that they would gorge themselves into a stupor that afternoon. It was their celebration. I expected no less. Since they had come into my house, they had acted as if they owned it. They had behaved like poor relations, half guilty, but finally unable to control their appetites. <laughs> would smile and reassure me. They expected me to believe because I had no choice. Wilfred, trust me. He really believed Marianne would be well. He saw a light. There is a light at the end of a long tunnel. Believe me. There is a light at the end of a long tunnel. Stay here, Doctor. I'll get more champagne. He was ready. I knew it. Drunk and fat and full of his own importance. I left then. My cruelty to Marianne was inhuman. I know that. I had loved her. I had fathered our child, Jeffrey. I had brought her to this. But I swear that on that afternoon, all I wanted was to save my child. to get her away from that house. But also, I wanted to set free those other wretches who had so long been abused by the doctors.
I knew what they might do if these inmates were freed. And this is my guilt. I knew, and still, I freed them. started for the house. I went to get our car to take Marianne away. I do not know exactly when she slipped away from me. 
I assume that when they saw her in the dining room, the inmates believed her to be part of that household which they hated. And so, they killed her. Later, there was a celebration. And then most of the inmates fled, I don't know where. But I shall never forget what they did to my child. Since that Christmas, I have lived in prisons and asylums. Lived anonymously as an animal. I have wandered in bitterness until all seasons have become as one. And that is a season of vengeance. still alive. This is still his house. Your grandfather died in 1950. He was burned to death in this house. My grandfather poured gasoline over a squad he found here. The town wanted to believe he was dead. They still do. was an asylum. There was a massacre by the inmates. Tess, Toman, the sheriff. Your father. No. All inmates. They killed my mother in this room.
I spent that night weeping. By morning, there were no more tears. I know that my father and Jeffrey both thought they were shooting at killers, but they were simply the last victims in that house of victims. And now, a year later, they will tear down Wilfred Butler's monument. But they can never destroy my memories of what happened here. quite have the whole Christmas rhythm down. Do you let me, mind? Let me see this. No. If you want to do Christmas, it's... That's the Christmas rhythm. It's like the galloping reindeer. No, I'm a trained musician. I know how these things work. Anyways, uh, that wraps up Silent Night, Bloody Night. That mansion did not actually burn. You heard me say in the last segment that it's a, it's a, a tourist attraction now. It's a tourist so, attraction. I don't know what they burn and I don't know what they bulldozed, but uh, it's... Uh, I don't know what they look for. It wasn't it wasn't the mansion. So, uh, anyways, uh, that's it for that movie. Um, what do we got going on next? Uh, nothing. We've got uh, the actual Christmas show next week. Yes. Right? Uh, we've got a good movie planned for that, but it's a surprise, so I can't tell you yet, but it'll be nice. And then uh, Livingston said he would dress up as Santa. I did not. Well, what do you think? We've got a costume. You've got the beard. I think not. I think he'd make a great Santa. If you think he made a great Santa, type a comment or send us a letter and maybe with enough votes. Maybe if we could be democratic about the entire affair. Oh dear. We can, we can see Livingston as Santa, but uh, don't hold your breath. Anyway, so you got anything else, Tangela, to add to this conversation? No, all right. In any case, uh, we will be back next week with a different show. It'll be fun and uh, maybe Friday as well. So don't miss it. And don't forget, we love you. See you next time. So, uh, Tangela, you know, I was thinking with Christmas coming up, maybe we could do something fun and uh, go Christmas caroling. Mm -hmm.